This video is going to be about pie charts and there's a lot to get through so let's get started. To motivate you we have this wonderful picture of a very tasty looking pie. First of all we're going to interpret a pie chart. That just means they're going to give us a pie chart and we have to talk about it and discover some things about it. This pie chart is going to represent a survey that was done. In this survey there were it's about breakfast different types of things that you have for breakfast and in the survey 30 people said they like cornflakes said they have cornflakes which is nice cornflakes and here they are the cornflake group another group of people and we're not told how many we have to find out liked muesli. I would be in that group. Um, not that you care, really. But here's the thing. We're given the angles. So we're told this angle here is 100 degrees. It's labelled as 100 degrees. Oopsie daisy. And this angle here is labelled as 60 degrees. But how on earth would we find out how many people like muesli just from that? We have 30 people liking cornflakes, that's for sure. And we have this weird pie chart with a 100 degrees angle for cornflakes and a 60 degree angle for muesli. But we can use that pie chart to find out how many people had muesli. Here's how. We had 30 people who liked cornflakes and that equaled 100 degrees. The secret is in the angle. How many people liked muesli? Well, if 30 people is 100 degrees, what's 10 degrees? Always try and find out what 10 degrees or 1 degree is, and that will solve the entire mystery. Divide by 10. So 3 people is represented on the pie chart by 10 degrees. If 30 people are represented on the pie chart by 100 degrees here, cornflakes, then three people must be represented by a 10 degree angle. So a 60 degree angle, how many people is that? A 60 degree angle. 10 times by 6 gets you to 60. 3 times by 6 is 18. So it must be 18 people who like muesli because there's a 60 degree angle here. That is one interpretation of a pie chart. And again, the secret is find out what 10 degrees equals. So write it out. 30 people equals 100. Divide by 10. Sometimes you'll have to divide by lots of different types of numbers to get down to 10 degrees. So if those 30 people were 120 degrees, you'd divide by 12. And that would get you 10 degrees. Always try and find out what 1 degree or 10 degree is. And then you can multiply up to get to the degrees you're looking for. And that is one of the secrets of interpreting pie charts. But I can tell what you've been waiting for is doing our own pie chart. So let's go. For this, we need a group of data. So let's add in a group of data. Again, this can be um, a different survey done in a different city, let's say London. And again, on breakfast, different types of breakfast that people have. Here, um, we can just invent a load of different types but let's say for this one again we have cornflakes for the first group and they are there was 31 people in this survey cornflakes so it's a bit harder cornflakes and there was 31 people who liked cornflakes then muesli there's 28 people whoops there are 28 people in this survey who liked Muesli. Next, there's the English breakfast. Can't resist the English breakfast. And let's say, surprisingly, in England, there was only seven people. Let's make up some numbers. And croissant. I very may be spelling that wrong, but okay, just, that was my attempt. Croissant and my attempt at pronunciation. And there were 13 people 
we had croissant in this survey. And other, all the other types of breakfast was only 11 people. How would we create a pie chart out of that? How do we create a, a pie chart? First, let's draw our pie. Can't have a pie chart without a pie. There's our pie. Here's the secret. We need to, to see how these numbers are going to fit into a whole pie. A whole pie is going to be 360 degrees because it's a circle. So we need to think how are we going to fit these numbers into 360 degrees. To do that, we need to add them up. 31 plus 28 is 59, plus 7 is 66, plus 13 is 79, plus 11 is 90. And indeed, in most of the questions you're going to get, you're going to get some factor of 360, unless they're being very cruel. But even then, we can still do it. What do we do with that 90, though? I'm still confused. What we would do is 360 divided by the total. So in this case, 90. Let's write that as a formula. What you need to do in pie charts is always, and this is really quite important, you always do 360 degrees divided by the total, as in the total of all the frequencies. And you'll see in a moment why we do that. 360 divided by 90, if you're not sure, you can knock off the zeros, and that's 36 divided by 9, which is indeed 4. What do we do with that 4? How does that help? Well, that shows you how much you need to stretch each number to fit into that whole circle. So what we do for each of these numbers to find the angle that they're going to be on the pie chart is times by 4. For 28, we times by 4. For 7, we times by 4. Again, for all of them, we times by 4. 31 times by 4 is 124. So you get your protractor and you'd measure a 124 degree angle, which would be something like that. And you'd label that as cornflakes. The next angle would be 28 times 4. That's 112, I believe, and that would be here, which is muesli. And you'd have to obviously uh, measure correctly with your protractor. So you'd start off on this line and measure out your angle of 112, and that's muesli. And then you'd finish it off, and it would fit around the whole circle. Let's do one more quick example. And... We're going to use a different set of numbers, and I think we've got a good chance with our pie chart. We know the trick. The trick, just as a reminder, is 360 divided by the total. That's always what you need to do in a pie chart. 360 divided by the total. This time, it's different types of dinners that people have in Britain. Notice my fascination with food. So the dinner would be a type of pasta dinner, and that would be, in this bigger survey, 80 people said that. Let's say lasagna, in this bigger survey, 200 people had that. Let's say Indian meal, and there would be 120. And Chinese, just making these up, Chinese in this survey was 230 and all types of other dishes um, in this case would be 90 it's just kind of a silly survey but we need to do the same trick for a pie chart we add all these up 280 400 630 720 that's interesting that's even more than 360 but we can still do it 360 divided by 720, well, 720 is twice as big as 360. In other words, this is a half. If you're not sure again, knock out the zeros, 
and 36 divided by 72, you could keep halving it, so it would be 18 over 36, 9 over 18, and eventually you get down to see that it's a half. Or you could just in your calculator do 360 divided by 720. So in this case, we're going to have to shrink the numbers down. We're going to have to half each of the numbers to fit on the pie chart. So we times, again, remember which times, times by a half, times by 0 0.5, times by 0 0.5 for every single number. We don't have to write that all out, but you get the idea. We're going to have to time, we always times by that magic number that we get. Okay, let's do that very quickly. So 80 times by a half is 40. So you'd do a 40 degree angle. You use your protractor and do a 40 degree angle and label that pasta. P for pasta. 200 times a half is 100. And you'd label that lasagna. And I don't have to finish it, but you'll notice it'll fill in the whole circle. So a quick recap of this wonderful topic of pie charts. And I can almost smell that pie from here. What you need to do when you're interpreting a pie chart is find out what 10 degrees or what 1 degree is. But when you're making your own pie chart, you need to remember the formula. And you kind of hopefully get why the formula works, because it's how much you have to stretch or shrink the numbers so they fit into a circle, which is 360. And the formula is you do 360 divided by the total of the frequencies. 360 divided by the total of the frequency. Sometimes you'll be given the total, sometimes you have to count it up. But either way, that is the secret for doing your wonderful pie chart.